because everyone else is uh, still on their vacation and they're not back yet. But to bet this is the last class. All right, so uh, <clears throat> we're gonna continue what we started last time. But before, before that, let's uh, learn something new. Uh, look at the look at the screen. <clears throat> okay. As I said, normally in visual art, we have three categories. I mean, uh, normally, <clears throat> not exactly, okay? So these three categories are uh, landscape, la nature mode, and the portrait. We have learned the first class of Chinese ancient art, we have learned landscape. And the second class, we have learned still life. Today, let's just have a very quick study of Chinese uh, portraits. <clears throat> okay, this is, a, I'm, I'm talking about only one style. Uh, we mentioned uh, last time that they actually, there are many, many styles in Chinese ancient painting. Uh, like uh, gongbi, technical drawing, like uh, a lot of things. And uh, this time we're gonna focus, we're gonna focus just on just the one, okay? That is called, in Chinese, we call it uh, sui mu. Uh, translated into English, we may take it as powering ink. So that means we're using Chinese brush, dip the brush, into the ink and add, uh, add waters according to what kind of values we want. Uh, maybe a, uh, a little bit more water or just a few water. And then we power this ink on the paper. And then we, when the color, this color patch is created, uh, we work, work on the details like that. For instance, this is, a, this is the portrait. <clears throat> As we can see, the first one. The first one is uh, someone riding on a donkey and the follower is holding, a, holding an umbrella for him. Actually, this is, a, this is he has a name. His name is uh, uh, Zhong Hui. It's like, uh, like a ghostbuster for us. <clears throat> It catches, it catches the ghosts. Okay, so in this picture, uh, as we can see, as for the technique is concerned, they're using just a one brush and one ink, but adding different amount of water, they are creating different degrees of uh, values. <clears throat> uh, that's one kind of a technique. But what I'm gonna focus is that in this style, when we're making a portrait, oh, the, the, the facial expression, what matters for us is the facial expression. And that's all, okay? Not like a Western style. Uh, <clears throat> most of the time when we are making a oil painting portrait, because um, in school also, uh, our professors would tell us that uh, when we're making a portrait, what matters the most is the face and two hands. For instance, in this painting, the face and two hands must be lighted up. It must be very clear, very bright. The value should be very light. Or if the background, the color of the background is, uh, for instance, is yellow, then maybe we should use use the la couleur opposite de, de Jean. Uh, so the, uh, it is a violet. So maybe we are adding violet on the, on the face so that the face can stand up using the different 
techniques of uh, playing with the colors. <clears throat> but then, but in Chinese ancient painting, uh, in this style, it's different. What matters is only the, the facial expression. We're, we're only using this facial expression to express the personality of this person, the emotion of this person. If only that kind of personality, that kind of emotion is, uh, is be able to be described, then that's all. For instance, the, the first one, as I said, Ghostbuster. <clears throat> Actually, in the in the he he's living in the hell, okay, where a lot of uh, ghosts are are uh, are living, and uh, and also he can he has the ability of uh, uh, passing through from our world to the hell, from the hell to our world, but but <clears throat> uh, for this first percentage, for him, it should be very frightening, all right. Uh, so the artist just uh, he used a lot of details to to make a person that is uh, frightening. For instance, uh, the, the mustache, the beard, it's like a uh, it's like a thorn, and uh, you see the eyes are gobbling, and uh, also the, the the gesture for him. But every every stroke is used, every detail is used uh, used for the only one purpose, to create a person who is a very frightening. And if that kind of a frightening person is created, then that would be all. And nothing else matters. For instance, the umbrella. You see the umbrella, as we can see, it is broken. And also uh, the following, actually the following servant is also a, a ghost. Uh, for us, most of the time, a ghost would be frightening, but uh, you see, uh, in this painting, the following ghost, it seems to be frightened by this figure. So imagine if a frightening person is frightened by someone else, you see, you know, that kind of a contrast. Okay. So if the, the goal of uh, creating a frightening person is achieved, that would be all. And let's look at the, the right picture. It is also a, a very famous portrait. I mean, the very common topic, uh, it is, he is called Damo. <clears throat> All right, for him, you see, his facial expression, every detail in this facial expression is employed to describe a person who is so um, desolate, who's solid in will, right? And if that kind of personality could be described, or it could be uh, could be obvious in the painting, then nothing else matters. You see, so in this painting, we just see the face and nothing else. And as for the whole body, it just uh, the artist just use a, a few uh, very bold, very quick brush strokes to finish all the the remaining details. But I don't know whether or not you can understand, but. Uh, uh, you'd better keep this in mind because if today you don't understand, maybe later you will, all right? So in Chinese portrait painting, in this style, one important thing is the facial expression. The other one is this, the drapes. You see the, the all the folds created by, by the cloth. So if you look at the picture, the right picture, at the bottom, at the... At the bottom of the of the percentage, <clears throat> you see some drapes. All right, those drapes are crucial, are important, because it is not. It looks simple, like the very much like the one we did last time. Every still life, it looks simple, but there are many roles uh, applied. Okay, so uh, this is a quick. Quick introduction of Chinese style of a portrait. And uh, let's go back to, to the one we have started. All right, I'm gonna just uh, repeat briefly. So in this still nature, a uh, still life, Chinese style of still life is different from the one of uh, the Western world. Because you see, in French, we call it la nature morte, right? 
in English, we call it still life, but whatever language we're using, the main idea is that the thing we're drawing, the thing we're painting is dead, right? It cannot move. It doesn't have any emotion. Uh, <clears throat> it is c'est pas vivant, okay? So that's the Western idea, but in Chinese idea, this is different. Even though we're drawing, we're painting a, a dead one, a still one, but still <clears throat> the painting itself, the drawing itself should reveal something, something full of life, full of energy. So uh, most of the time <clears throat> when we finish a still life, we will probably add some something something live like uh in this painting we see a cockroach a grasshopper <clears throat> sometimes you can add some birds some insects butterflies even some small pets like a, like a cat like a dog or sometimes i'm gonna show you one other uh, one other picture that we didn't share last time uh, in, in some cases, we can also use some kids or even some, some old men, just uh, we can use some, some persons. Okay, I'm gonna stop this and share from another device. <clears throat> this is photo gallery. Which, uh, a supported document type, please select an image of PDF or document. Uh, all right, I'm gonna send this picture to my email and then we can take from there. Uh, Donald, do you have uh, your email address? Yes. Okay, can you type it on the screen so that I can send you an email? Uh, Donald Wei Ka Wei Cha. Let me see. Okay, this is a D O N A L D Wei Xie dot Gmail dot com. All right, perfect gmail.com donald gmail.com okay painting and uh, attach a file sending sent <clears throat> all right <clears throat> Can you check your email right now? Or maybe I can. Send. Let me share. Yes, I see it in my email. You see, right? Can you open it up? <clears throat> and look at the look at the attached file. And I'm gonna authorize you to share screen. Let me see. Okay. All right. <clears throat> You can share your screen. Just open the file. Because <clears throat> this is this painting. What is it? Okay, perfect. You see this painting. 
this painting, we can also see uh, some still, still life. The lotus. Uh, let's uh, let's go to the techniques uh, late. But now you see, as I said, when we finish painting something dead, we all we make uh, most of the time we add something alive, like insects, like a lot of other animals. But sometimes we can also add some persons. In this case, this is a kid. And the reason why, the reason why we add those things is that in order to make our paintings more alive, more uh, full of energy. <clears throat> That's one thing. The other, the other thing important is that you look at the lotus, look at the leaves, look at the petals, look at the stems. As you can see, if you if you are staring at the leaves, actually those are not of the shape of a real leaf. It is just uh, some colors blending to it's each some, other. Uh, color that splattered, you know. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's just some color that splattered on the page that the mm -hmm. artist tried his best to make look like a leaf. Yeah, the first, first step for this artist is that just to power the ink of course, in this case, the ink is a, is a color ink uh, onto the paper. And then they, the, the, the different colors will blend, will blend into each other randomly. As you can see the leaf and also the petals, the flower itself, you see, we barely see a real shape of a real petal. It's just like uh, some random color uh, be powered onto the paper. The same thing happens also the stem. But when this is done, the artist just to add a little bit of the details, like uh, uh, on the stems, he just added some dots, some dark dots to, yeah, to signify the, the, the thorns grown on the surface of the stem, a stem of a lotus. And also for the leaf, it just uh, randomly added some uh, some stems, some lines uh, to signify the structure of the, of the leaf. But if we separately take the leaf out, then it doesn't look like a leaf at all. And we separately take the flower out, it doesn't look like a flower at all. And the stems also. But if we put all those together, then they will form a very good painting. Okay, this is the idea of Chinese ancient painting. We don't care about whether or not it looks alike, but we do care what kind of, uh, what kind of message could be sent from this uh, painting. Like, uh, like I said, in Chinese ancient paintings, there are a lot of uh, symbols used. For instance, uh, the, the uh, lotus, it means some righteous person, flawless person. A person will not polluted by all the bad things of the society. If this is a gentleman, he's a gentleman. He doesn't cheat. He doesn't, you know, do anything uh, bad. So uh, the the lotus it stands for uh, stands for a righteous person. So if only if only uh, using the uh, message written by written with the calligraphy, uh, the stem stamps also, and the image itself also. All the things added up together and express the idea, uh, the righteousness of a person. Then it's a fine. All right. So that's another thing. But uh, uh, the reason why I'm I'm sharing this picture with you is that in most of the still lives, still live paintings, we add something vivant, all right? That's the idea. So you can uh, stop the sharing. All right, and I'm gonna share mine. All right, so, Selena, you mocked, right? As I said, 
En français, la nature morte, c'est-à-dire quelque chose est mort. En anglais, still life means uh, something that doesn't, doesn't move. Pretty much like a dead thing. But with Chinese, we're using some other you know, concepts. All right, those are insects. And I believe last time you chose the left one, okay? So uh, we still have more than one hour. I wish you can, you can finish the coloring of the drawing in 35 minutes. And for the remaining 35, uh, 30 minutes, we're gonna add some, some insects or some other thing that you prefer, maybe a bird or an animal. All right, so dépêche uh, toi Il vaut mieux le finir uh, dans 300 minutes. Et c'est parti. Uh, any question, Dano? Uh, no. No, perfect. All right. So let's do it. Still the same. I'm gonna check your drawing every 10 minutes. And since I'm recording, I think I should, let me see, where's the button?